Hello, hello, everyone. There we go. I am live. Okay. Hello, you guys. How are you guys doing? We'll just wait a few minutes till our friends join in. I'm super excited to be here this morning on a Friday. Um, it's going to be one of those weekends where I believe it's going to rain here in California tomorrow. So, but we'll see. We'll see. I guess we need the rain, but we always need the rain, right? All right, I'm just trying to see who's here with me. If you guys are watching, please let me know where you're from. Say hello so I know you guys are there. Thank you. Hi, Linda. Today is Friday, right? <laughs> I have to think about it for a second. Where are all my friends? Oh, sunny Idaho. Nice, nice. It's cold here. It is cold and gloomy. I'm wearing a sweater, and yesterday I was wearing a sleeveless top. So go figure. Go figure. It's so good to see you guys. Um, actually, while we're waiting for our friends to join, I'm going to go grab some samples because I want to show you a few things, okay? I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay, let's see who's joined us. Hi, Diana from Tennessee. Oh, it's going to be 76 degrees. I'm so jealous. Hey, my friend Connie, how are you? I am so jealous. We are freezing today over here. Well, I'm freezing. It's good to see you guys. Hi, Martha. We'll just wait a couple minutes, just a little after nine right now. I have a few minutes. So today's project is kind of fun. I'm going to show you how to quilt an existing panel so well it's not a panel i guess i should have not really wrote a panel it's a piece um it's a door banner um wall hang a door banner mini quilt i guess you want to call it um and so it's a pieced project so we've already pieced it together um my dear friend louise pieced it together and um we put batting and we put backing and now I said you know what I need to quilt this and so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to show you how to um, quilt sections of this uh, particular door banner and so that's the class for today um, this particular class Linda is not on YouTube as this is a private Facebook group um, but I do have other YouTube videos on YouTube not a lot but I do have a few out there. Hello Annette, welcome. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and get started here real quick. So today, like I said, our project is, um, I'm going to show you how to quilt a section of a um, panel here, a, not a panel, a um, I keep calling it a panel because it looks like a panel to me because it's already pieced for me. My dear friend Louise pieced it for me. It's one of those uh, Riley Blake uh, monthly door panels. And so that's what it is. Um, hi, Joanne. Welcome. I just saw Joanne this week live at one of my classes. Um, okay, so just real quick, I wanted to um, also let you know that I am going to be starting... Um, a new, it's not new, new, um, a few of you have already taken it. Good morning, Mickey. Um, it's my advanced IQ designer, my design center retreat. 
And so I added a session in June. Um, this will be my fourth session. I've already done, I've done one. I've got two more to go this month and then um, this will be my fourth one. So if you guys feel that you are comfortable or you know that you are comfortable using IQ Designer or My Design Center, um, but you want to take it um, up a notch, go to that next level, um, I have a class just for you. It's actually a two-day retreat. Um, in fact, Connie, you attended my first retreat. Maybe you can comment what you think about it or your thoughts on it. Um, this is one of the projects that we're going to be um, teaching you or I'm going to be teaching you is how to do all of these flowers. It's kind of a layered technique and how to um, plan your embroidery and how to layer all of that. So my retreats comes with all the materials, so all the fabric, um, the background fabric, all of this fabric, as well as the canvas. Um, it comes with printed instructions. Um, I don't have my book handy here, but I'll, I'll go grab it. I have uh, printed instructions um, that come with it. And we just learn a lot. We learn a lot. Um, and then the next project is this, and I'm going to teach you how to do um, the flying geese, how to, how to create flying geese in the machine in IQ Designer or My Design Center. And we make a um, placemat. We make a placemat. So um, so that, those are, and then there's another project as well. So if you feel that you are comfortable with IQ Designer or My Design Center, but want to just learn it up, take it up a notch, um, I really invite you to uh, sign up for it. So to sign up for it, let me go ahead and type, um, whoops, hang on one second. I accidentally clicked on something. Um, oh, Joanne, you love the placemat. Retreat was challenging but doable, yeah. Hence the name Advanced Retreat, right? Um, all right, let me go ahead and, oh, I know what I need to do. Oh, I keep pressing the wrong button. Let me go ahead and type in um, where you'd find the information on the retreat if you guys are interested. I did also send out an email. So if you're on my email list, you got an email from me last night. So let me go ahead. Okay, perfect. So that's that about the retreat. And now let's go ahead and just start with, um, sorry, I'm gonna organize my desk here. Too much stuff happening over here. Um, let me go ahead and show you the project for today. So this is, the, I, I sent a little pic, sneak peek picture up on Facebook this morning. So this is the first block that I, um, that I quilted and then I quilted this guy right here, little center of the popsicle. Um, and now I'm going to, today right now with you guys, I'm gonna quilt this section here and I'll do another star block, which is right, you can't see it, but it's like right here. Um, so I'll show you how to quilt those sections. Um, oh, there's Louise. So Louise, Louise is the one who constructed this for me. So thank you, Louise, for doing that. So let me go ahead and put this on my machine here. So I am using the dime magnetic hoop. You can use the dime magnetic hoop or you can use the one that comes with, um, that comes from Baby Lock or Brother. They're both wonderful hoops. Um, I did thread my bobbin thread with a yellow color that matches my background fabric. You can kind of see the background right here. Um, it's the yellow fabric. So I did, um, I did thread my bobbin with that. And what I also am going to show you as I do uh, turn off my thread snips. So the thread snips are turned off and I bring my bobbin thread up to the top. So a couple of things that I do just so that my back is somewhat neat, um, just like my front would be, okay? So let me go ahead and just start here real quick. So we're going to start with um, My Design Center or IQ Designer. And I'm going to start here up at the top and I'm going to um, scan in my background fabric. So I'm going to click on this little leaf icon with the arrow pointing to the right. And I'm going to click on Image Scan. And then it's going to scan my background. Okay, so I'll just say okay, it'll give me, it'll take a second just to scan the background. In the meantime, I'm gonna go grab my booklet from the retreat so you guys can take a peek at that.
So of course, the larger the hoop, the longer it takes to scan. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you. Here is my scan, it's very light. So I'm gonna go up here to the top of the screen and click on the opacity icon to make it a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a regular shape. So I'm gonna go over here to my shapes icon and I'm gonna start with a square because I'm going to go ahead and take care of this popsicle. That's the one I'm going to quilt right now. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the square. And so I do need to obviously size it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on size and I'm going to go in from the left and the right. And then I'm going to go top to bottom, making it shorter. And I'm going to dim my background, or maybe I should go this way. What's hard is I have two shades of yellow here. So let me go ahead and move this up. I do need to make it shorter. Now what I like to do is, even though my design is right on the perimeter of that shape, I do make my box or my square a little bit shorter. So if you take a look here, I'm gonna go over just to this next door, just so it's easier to see, probably for you guys as well on the camera. Let me zoom in here. So what I do like to do is you can see here, it's a little bit bigger than the um, rectangular box. So I am gonna make it a little bit smaller from the left and the right position, as well as from the top and bottom, just so that my quilting really remains inside my shape. None of it sticks out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just click this and just drag it over, because I know it's the same size. And I, I, and I can fine tune the position um, later on another screen. So that's my basic shape. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the line properties icon and do a no sew and click okay. Because I don't want it to stitch out. So I'm gonna just do the little bucket or cup icon and then I'm going to touch that outline. So the outline just turned um, gray, and then I'm going to fill it with stitches. So I'm gonna to go to my fill properties icon, and then I'm gonna to go to the decorative or fancy fills, and then I'm gonna find a fill um, that I wanna use. So there's a lot of different ones you can use. I just use this one on the one that's just to the left of the design I'm doing right now. Um, so there's a lot of fun ones that you can do to fill it in. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I go with this one? Let's try that one. Those were the newer fills. And then I'll say, okay. I will change the color to a red. It was already a red as a default, so I'll just leave it at red. And then I'll click on the um, bucket or the cup icon for the fill and then click right inside that section. Good morning, Lynette. Hi, Janet. Welcome. Then I'm gonna go ahead and say next. And at this screen, I can go ahead and resize it if I wanted to. And I think I will. I'll go ahead and, or maybe what I'll do is I, I wanna center this little piece right here in the center. So maybe what I can do is do the, um, not random shift, but the offset. And maybe I need to move it over. Let's see what that looks like. Now I'm just playing, we're just playing together. Do you see how it's moving it over ever so slightly to the left? So now the center section is exactly in the center of that rectangular box. Pretty cool, right? So then I'm gonna say set, I'm gonna leave the size the way it is. I'm gonna say set and I'm gonna say okay. But now I really wanna make sure that this is gonna fit in my space. So I'm gonna go here up at the top and there's a little camera icon here. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna click on scan. So it's gonna click 
and do a background scan one more time. So it's scanning the, the background one more time. to the other camera and take a look. So there's the background um, and it looks pretty good actually. But what I am gonna do is I'm going to click on embroidery and I'm gonna do one more step just to kind of double check it because we can, right? We have the projector. So I'm gonna click on the projector icon and what I'm gonna do with the projector is just double check to make sure it's within that rectangular box. So the way the projector works, my friends, is you have this rectangular box that's right on your screen. Um, and it only will project whatever is in this box. So for example, if I need to see up here, I do need to drag this box up within the section here so that way it'll show everything that's in this box. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over and show you on the machine here. Let me see if I can zoom in. So there is the, the project, uh, projected design on my space. Now it's hard for you guys to see, but I'm noticing here it's over to the right more and not, and there's a lot of space here on the left hand side. So on the same screen that I'm on, you have your, um, oh, where am I? We have your move arrows right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the design to the left a bit so that it's centered within my rectangular space and the bottom looks good. Now I do wanna check the top of my design. So what I'm gonna do is drag this rectangular box all the way to the top and I'm gonna look at the top and see what the top looks like. So now I notice something kind of interesting. The top has more space on the right. So maybe what happened is I did not hoop my fabric 100%. So the nice thing on the same screen is you can rotate your design a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my design ever so slightly. I'm using the one degree increments. Um, so it looks really good on the top. I will double check it on the bottom now. So I'm looking at my design on the top and now I will go ahead and slide my little projector and look at it from the bottom and it looks really good. So then what I'm gonna do on the machine is just go ahead and start embroidering. So I have a um, a yellow thread on my machine to kind of match my fabric here. I am going to bring up my bobbin thread to the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower my needle and bring my bobbin thread to the top. Okay, so I have both threads on the top. I did do one more thing. Let me go ahead and show you on the machine here. On the bottom of the screen here, you have this icon where the scissors are. And I did go ahead and turn off my end color trim and my jump stitch. Okay, I turned these off. All right, so now we're ready to stitch up. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the start button. It's gonna go for a little bit and then I'm gonna stop the machine to cut my jump stitches here. And off I go. Pretty easy, right? With the combination of the camera and the combination of the projector. So projector and the camera, you can really, really fine tune your positioning for your embroideries. It's amazing. Good morning, Birdie.
All right. So it is done just as easy as that. So let me go ahead and take it off the machine so you guys can get an up close look at it. I'm going to turn off. Remember, because I did turn off my um, jump stitches, I do need to cut my thread on the top and I will need to cut it from the back side as well. All right, so let me go ahead and turn the camera over so you guys can see how that looks. Isn't that beautiful? So I went ahead and quilted that section. So I've got two sections done. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and come down and work on, let's see, I'm trying to, my, my desk, I can't even, I'm going to go ahead and do this little square down here and show you how to do another section, okay? So I'll go put this back on my machine. Yes, Linda, I did use the projector and the scan. Now, you don't have to use both, but we have them, so why not, right? That's, that's my theory on this. Okay, so let's go back to our machine. And let me zoom back out a bit here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say home. Hey, Lynn. I'm going to go ahead and click home. And I'm going to start right here with IQ Designer, my design center. And I'm going to go up to the top here. And I'm going to show you a little trick. So I'm going to go up to the top, this little fabric scan icon, and I'm going to click on image scan. Now, because I did not. Oh, Linda. Oh, perfect. Perfect. I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. That is perfect. I know. Isn't that amazing how those tools just come in handy? I know. I love it. Um, well done. Now, back to this project here, because I've already scanned in once and I didn't shift anything in my hoop, right? I didn't have, I didn't rehoop anything. I didn't shift my fabric. I didn't nudge my fabric. If I go ahead and just click on this icon of the sewing machine, the picture of the sewing machine, um, you can actually bring in your last scan. I don't know if you guys knew that, but you can actually bring in your last scanned design and then you can just click on the word set. I'm hoping that I can see the bottom of this square here. Let's see. It's pretty close, but I think I'll make it. I think I'm going to just go for it and try and see without actually rescanning it. So here's the um, square that I'm going to do. And I'm going to click on um, the shapes icon. I'm going to grab a square and I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to bring the square down to the bottom here and then I'm going to size it. I'm not quite sure what size the square is. I'm just going to just look at it based on the fabric and see. Maybe it's about, it looks like it's about a four inch. Yeah, it looks like it's about a four inch square. So there's my square and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to make it a no sew stitch so it doesn't stitch out and then I'm going to fill it with stitches. All right, which one should we do next, my friends? Any any suggestions? It is a star. This kind of looks like a star. Um, what else could we do? Let's look. Or this shape here. Mm. Sorry, I'm just deciding. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that one that looks kind of like a star. Let's see what happens. And then I'll say OK. And I'll say OK again. And then I'll click on the bucket here and then just click inside that space. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And let's take a look at our design and see if we want to keep it like that. It kind of looks cool or we can change the size of it. And you can also skew your design, right? So you can do like this random shift and you can shift your design a bit and kind of make it, it'll make it kind of wonky. So it just adds a little bit of dimension to your fill. That's kind of fun. 
Um, you can make it smaller in size if you wanted to. That looks pretty cool, huh? And then at the very bottom here, you can do the thickness. Right now it's going over it a couple of times or you can do it a single thickness. I usually keep it at a default unless I'm doing something special or in particular that I don't want it to. So I'll go ahead and hit set and bring it right over to the embroidery side. And now what I'm going to do is once again at the very top of the screen here, I'm going to click on this. Um, actually, I'm going to go to embroidery. Click on embroidery first and then I'm going to go to this camera icon. So we're going to do one more scan. So on this side, you do have to scan. So I'm just going to go ahead and click scan and let it do a scan of my hoop. Hundred and eighty hoopings, Linda. That's a lot of hoopings. I bet you you're like the hoop master, like rehooping expert now. You know what they say, muscle memory, right? The more you do, um, the more you retain it. I'm trying to make this flat so you guys can see. Okay, so there is um, there is my square. Oh, what is that? I've got some blue lint on here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the projector and let's take a look at the design here. So on my screen, my projector is up in the center, so I'm going to bring it down here and take a look at the top of the design first. And let's see what it looks like. It looks pretty good. I think I can nudge it over to the left a little bit. And then let's take a look at the bottom of the design. And to do that, all I'm going to do is use my projector and just slide it towards the bottom. And let's take a look and see how that looks. That looks really good, but I'm going to nudge it to the left. Let's take a look at it from the top again. Okay, it looks good. It looks good. So all I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and bring up my bobbin thread to the top. And I've got two threads on the top. I'm going to go ahead and just start. Lucky for me, I didn't have to change my top thread. They're both the same color. Not that it's difficult to thread the machine. So I use both. I use the dime magnetic hoop and I also use the um, baby locker brother magnetic hoop. They're both wonderful hoops. It just depends on which one I grab first, I feel like. They're both the really good hoops. Just trying to move this so you guys can see it.
almost done. Thanks, Janet. Thanks, Lynette, for the tip. Thanks, Linda, for the tip. I also put my um, hoop over the bed of my machine and just slide my fabric through. Makes it so much easier. So what um, Linda is talking about is, let's see, let me go here and raise my, um, here, hang on, let's do it this way. Let's see if I can back up a little bit. So what she's talking about, if you have to slide your fabric, you just take your top part of your hoop and you put it over the bed of your machine here, or the top part of your machine, then you can slide your fabric into another position, for example, and then you just bring it down and then you are ready to go. Like for example, if you wanted to do this section here, then you are ready to go. All right, but let's go ahead and just take a look at this, this part of the design and see what, how, how it looks. Let me go ahead and change cameras. and show you what that looks like. Okay, so there it is. This is the one that I just did. Turned out really cute. So I didn't realize that this was a bright yellow versus this one. The fabrics were a little bit different. Um, but the threads are the same, but the threads look different on that fabric, so it worked. And then I just did these two. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of keep continuing on and hopefully get this um, little door banner quilted so I can display it here in the store. Anybody have any questions on the project? Thanks, Mickey. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, so just real quick, so for those of you who joined late, um, I wanted to kind of talk about my upcoming advanced um, IQ retreat. So these are the two projects that we're gonna be making. Um, it's definitely an advanced class. So if you guys feel comfortable using IQ Designer or My Design Center, and this we do the um, flying geese in the hoop, and we also add binding on the table runner. We also add, on uh, the placemat, we add binding. Um, so let me grab my booklet here. Um, so you get a colored booklet, a color, a printed booklet with in this entire direction, step by step, all the fabric kits. So it's a lot of fun. Um, so if you guys are looking to take your IQ um, to the next level, this would be a really fun one to do. And I've signed, I've had a new session and it starts in June. Um, for those of you who are not quite there yet, I do have another class coming up. It's the um, candle mat class. It also does um, not just basic techniques, but other techniques. Um, so if that's another one, and that's a monthly. So it's not all in, you know, crammed in two days. It's over over the course of six months, and it's a seasonal candle mat club. So that's another um, thing that you may want to look at. So everything is on my website under salimacreates.com. Um, thanks, Louise. Thanks, Diana. Thanks, Lynette and Connie. Thanks, Lynn. I know this is the best way to quilt. That's definitely the best way to quilt. I'm such a cheater that way, right? Oh, well, it's okay. It's our secret. <laughs> Anybody have any questions on today's lesson? So I invite you guys to grab a panel, grab a quilt, a table runner, a wall hanging that you've pieced, and then just do a section at a time and, and try it. It's, it's really quite easy um, and it's just a lot of fun. Thanks, Linda, I appreciate it. I know, I love teaching. It's, it's my passion. I think it was my calling. And I, and I discovered it, um, you know, over the last course of these years. But that besides teaching, I love teaching, but I just love IQ Designer, my design center. That's just, um, it's like my best friend. Don't, don't tell anybody, but it's like my best friend. So when I want to have some quiet time to myself, I literally go to my machine and play. 
Oh, thanks, Linda. That'll be fun. It'll be fun. All right, you guys. Well, you guys take care and you guys have a good rest of the week. And if you guys want to see anything else that um, I can teach you guys on these Friday little demos, just let me know. I am very open and would love to hear from you. So if you guys want me to teach you any, any techniques, um, just let me know. Shoot me an email, comment on, on the Facebook here, and then I'll read it and I can do something that you guys want to see. Um, if not, we will talk to you guys in two weeks. I will guys see you in two weeks. What will be the date there? Let's take a look here. It will be um, the 26th, so April 26th um, will be the next IQ class. So hopefully I'll see you guys all back then. Until then, have a great, great day. Um, yes, yeah, so Linda, great question. The IQ class is every two weeks every two weeks so I piggyback with um, with Lynn Lynn does the scan and cut um, demo so next week she will do scan and cut um, same time but it's in a different group it's in the brother scan and cut tips and tricks um, so we just kind of piggyback on that Friday so I come every two weeks so my next class is on the 26th Okay, thanks, Mickey. Yes, you have a great weekend as well. You guys enjoy the weekend. Um, us locals will get a little bit of rain, I think, tonight and tomorrow, but you know, or tomorrow and Sunday. I don't know, I can't keep up. All I know is that I've, I heard it's tomorrow and I've got to drive and take my son to basketball um, in Santa Monica on the freeway, and I just don't like, I just don't like doing all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping he tells me he doesn't want to go. I doubt it, but we'll see. All right, guys, you guys take care, and we'll talk soon, okay? Bye.